Hello and welcome to the October 2023 Sky Report. My name is Vanessa and I will be your Sky Guide again this month. Up first on October 10th is a view for early risers. The crescent moon, Venus, and Regulus will all be visible on the eastern horizon from about 4 a.m. to just before the sun rises. The star Regulus is the brightest star in the constellation Leo the Lion. This will be a noticeable and beautiful presentation in the sky, and a reminder that Venus has made its way into the morning side of our sky. This is an infrared image of Venus taken on September 21st as a 29% full crescent. On October 10th, when the Moon, Regulus, and Venus are close, Venus will be illuminated to about 47%, and if you have a telescope or binoculars, it will look nearly halfway illuminated. Next up on October 14th, we will see a partial solar eclipse here in Southern California. The maximum eclipse happens at 9.24 a.m. here in Los Angeles. This eclipse is not a total eclipse. This is an annular eclipse. Those in the path of annularity, which is where the greatest possible eclipse is visible, will see a ring of the sun peeking out from behind the moon, as opposed to a total eclipse where the entire surface or photosphere of the sun is completely covered. You should not look directly at the sun during this partial eclipse, but instead use one of the many safe methods of watching. There are special eclipse glasses that you can buy, or you can use a simple pinhole viewer to see a projected image of the sun onto a flat surface. Using one of these methods, this is what the eclipse will look like from here in Los Angeles. The moon will cover about 71% of the sun's surface. The eclipse will start just before 8.08 a.m. and will end at just before 10.50 a.m. And getting back to the nighttime sky, Jupiter and Saturn will be visible all throughout the month. Saturn will set in the first half of the night, and Jupiter will stay out until about sunrise for the whole month. Jupiter will be one of the brightest objects in the sky, so if you see what appears to be a bright star, it might be Jupiter or Venus. So take out some binoculars or maybe a telescope to tell which one. If it turns out to be Jupiter, you might see something like this. This image was taken on September 8th, and it includes the shadow of the transiting moon Europa. This image of Saturn was taken on September 7th. With Saturn high in the sky in the first half of every night this month, it's a great time to try to catch the Cassini division in the rings that you can see here in this picture. High in the sky at 10 p.m. on the 15th are some fall constellations, Cassiopeia, Perseus, and Pegasus. Another fall constellation that's difficult to see here in LA with the light pollution is Andromeda. If you head to a dark sky site, you'll have no problem seeing Andromeda the constellation and Andromeda the galaxy. The galaxy appears as a fuzzy spot in the sky when it's dark enough, and it's huge. The spiral arms of the galaxy stretch to the size of about six full moons in the sky. Although when you do look with your eyes, the fuzzy patch is smaller than that. Here is an amazing photo of Andromeda taken by one of our museum guides, Casey Rain. Here you see Andromeda and its companion galaxy, M110 to the upper left, and M32 to the right of the core of Andromeda. If you want to try to see it yourself, head out to a dark sky site and look high in the sky in the east for a fuzzy, extended light patch in the sky. Now the Andromeda galaxy may be six full moons across, but you definitely don't want to go out to a dark sky site during a full moon to see it. So let's take a look at our lunar calendar this month so you can plan that trip out to a dark sky at the best time. Last quarter moon is on October 6th. New moon is on October 14th. First quarter is on October 21st. And the full moon on October 28th. Turning back to constellations, another one we are very familiar with here in Southern California is Ursa Major. You might know part of this constellation as the asterism the Big Dipper. This time of year, the Big Dipper dips below the horizon, as you see here. However, if you were to travel north, as our program supervisor Patrick So did, the Big Dipper stays in the sky all year round. This image was taken by Patrick So from England. You can see that the Big Dipper is in about the same orientation as it was in that last picture, except it's well above the horizon here. As our fall constellations take their place high in the sky in the evening, our summer constellations, Lyra, Cygnus, and Aquila, are on their way out. You can catch these constellations setting in the west early in the evening. On the other hand, on the eastern side of our horizon, waiting in the wings, we have our winter constellations, Gemini, Orion, Taurus, and Auriga, rising in the early morning sky. And lastly, the Orionid meteor shower peaks this month. 
the meteors of the Orionid meteor shower originate from the remnants of the material left behind from Halley's Comet. The expected peak in ideal conditions is about 20 meteors per hour, and the peak is at about 5 a.m. on October 21st. The 42% waxing crescent moon will set at about 11 p.m., so it won't disturb observations for the rest of the evening and throughout the morning, including during the peak hour. You will need to go to a dark sky site to see anywhere close to the 20 meteors per hour predicted. 20 meteors per hour may not seem like too much, but it's a really great excuse to pay a visit to a dark sky site. Well, that's it for October. I'll see you all again next month.